The first sweater on the list for my fall 2020 wardrobe is The Good Pattern by Julie Hoover. As you saw in my intro video, although this pattern calls for pearl soho linen quill yarn, I decided to sub in some yarn for my stash. This is the Better Breakfast Fingering by Bare Naked Wools. I got Gage with a US 3 needle and I really love how springy both the yarn and the swatch are. The designer has written this pattern to be knitted flat and then seamed up the sides and at the shoulders, and the thought of that is a little bit mind-numbing to me considering that this is all stockinette, so what I am going to do is knit this in the round. Knitting this in the round though is going to mean that I have to cast on a ton of stitches for the bottom and then try to join them in the round, which also gives me hardcore anxiety. What I am going to do is cast on at this point right here above the rib and start knitting up. So I'm going to do a provisional cast on here, knit up, maybe a couple rows, then join in the round, then continue on in the pattern for a little while. Then I'm going to come back here, take out my provisional cast on, and knit the rib down. That way my bind off here at the hem will also match my bind off on the sleeves. This is like one of those moments where I can't decide if it's my own modifications that are going to cause more anxiety or if it would be better if I just knit the pattern as written and then just dealt with the seaming at the end. And I also don't really appreciate the whole process of seaming. It's fine when there's a point to it, but for a garment this simple, it's not like it really needs it for structure, particularly considering the lightness of the yarn that I'm using. I cast on the 300-ish stitches with a crochet provisional cast on, which is my go-to. I always like to use a really smooth yarn for this cast on so that when I remove it later on, it comes out easily. This one is a cotton blend from my stash. A couple of inches in and I'm a little bit worried about how much yarn this is eating. I don't usually make sweaters with quite this much ease or sweaters with dolman sleeves, so my internal meter of how much yarn I should be using is a little off. I decided to insert a purl stitch at the sides as a faux seam. I think I've finished enough of this so that you can sort of get an idea of the way this is constructed, so let me show you what I've got so far. As we know, this pattern is meant to be knit flat and I am making some major changes here. So let me walk you through what I did. We are looking at the front right now. I did my provisional cast on down here at the bottom, knit in the round up through the first set of increases for the dolman sleeve. And then when I started needing to add stitches on the ends of the rows in order to make the increase for the sleeve even more pronounced, that is where I switched over to knitting flat. Here at the side seam, you can see the gradual increases here. And then once I got to this point where I needed to start adding those stitches, I split and started knitting the front flat. So I'm lucky that I don't have a big difference between my gauge for knitting in the round and knitting flat. But if that is something that you do have, I would be careful about this modification. Just because on a fabric this plain, like this really plain stockinette, it's gonna be very obvious if you have a difference in your gauge. So it was basically when I got to these dolman sleeves where I started following the pattern again. So I followed the pattern as written up. Here's the right side of the body, left side of the body. So I followed the pattern as written from that point until I got to the shoulders. And at the shoulders, it instructs you to do a bind off, a gradual bind off so that you have a, a slope shoulder. Once I got to that point, I decided instead to do a short row shoulder so that eventually I'll be able to join the shoulders with a three needle bind off instead of having to seam them. And then I knit the collar extension as written. I'm at the point on the right front where the pattern is telling me to start binding off stitches to create the sloped shoulder but instead of binding them off, I'm going to use some German short rows like I did on the left side, so let me show you that now. In the pattern, it says to bind off four stitches at the beginning of the next wrong side row. So as you can see here, I'm on the right side, and instead of binding the stitches off at the beginning of the next wrong side row, I am just going to knit until I have four stitches left, and then I'm gonna short row. <laughs> 
And I've turned my work to start the short row. So I'm using German short rows here, but you can do whatever you like. So I'm just going to slip the first stitch, pull my yarn around to the back and then forward to start purling again. And then I'm just gonna work my wrong side row on the way back. This pattern has a really nice slipped stitch edge at the neck, which I appreciate. And the first short row is complete. So at the shoulder edge, you can see that there is a doubled stitch here. When I'm doing my next short row, this is going to count as the last stitch in the row. If we were knitting according to pattern, these four stitches would be gone and bound off, not on the needle anymore. So I'm basically just gonna ignore those moving forward. The next row, I also need to bind off four according to the pattern. So I am going to knit until this point where I have the doubled stitch and then I have three regular stitches and then I'm going to short row again. Another thing to note about this pattern is that there is some at the same time action written, which is a little bit annoying, but I understand why they did it because with the number of sizes in this pattern, it would be pretty irritating to write it all out. And also there would be a, a lot of possibility for errors in the pattern. That's just something to note. So what I did was write out a chart where for myself or I kept track of both the V-neck shaping and the sleeve shaping and now the short row shaping. So that's just something you might wanna do as well. I'm coming up to my next short row. So I know that this double stitch right here is going to be acting as the first stitch of the row. So I'm gonna to knit to three stitches right before it. And now that I've turned, I'm gonna do my short row again. Here's what the completed short row section looks like. Here is the arm edge, and you can just see that there is a gradual stepwise fabric being built up. So now I'm gonna do my right collar extension here, the same way I did for the left side, and then move on to the back. Here's my completed front with both collar extensions. I have these stitches held on what actually used to be my diaper pins back in the day. I'm holding all of my shoulder stitches on these metal stitch holders for when I do the three needle bind off later. I've knit the back up to the point where I need to start doing the short rows. If I was following the pattern, I would be binding off stitches at either armhole end, but since I am doing the three needle bind off eventually, I'm gonna do the German short rows here again. And I'm going to treat them exactly the same way as I did for the front, except on the back, I need to be doing them at both sides instead of just at one side, like on the front. You can really see here how the natural texture of the yarn is showing up in the knitted fabric. Every once in a while I come across a section of yarn where each of the plies is a different shade of natural gray and I have to stop to admire it. All right, it is much later in the day, but the back is finished. It's hard to tell what's going on here because the stockinette is rolling so bad. Basically, my short rows go from the outside of the arm growing up towards the neck in the same way as the front, and that there are a certain number of stitches bound off for the neckline. So this is ready to block. So I want to block this before I start sewing things together and before I do the three needle bind off. So I am going to go ahead and take these stitches off of these stitch holders because God knows what is going to happen if I tried to put these ancient stitch holders into a water bath and give this a good soak in some probably warmish water and then block and then I'll do the three needle bind off and then start figuring out what is going on with these little doodly doos see how those are gonna come together at the end Ugh, this is like a provisional everything sweater look at that <sighs> I did this to myself. <laughs>
While that's soaking, I'm just weighing the remaining yarn that I have, and it looks like I have just over 62 grams, so hopefully that is enough. I still need to do a pretty good amount of ribbing on the bottom of the sweater, and then also ribbing on the sleeves. I really hate blocking the measurements, but especially since this is a preliminary blocking before I have to sew stuff, I made myself do this as thoroughly as possible. I tried to take a lot of care not to stretch anything out of shape in the water bath, but it had grown a little bit past the measurements I was shooting for. So I ended up doing a lot of padding to sort of squish it into shape. Blocking this was incredibly annoying, and also it looks gigantic. So I hope this thing looks as cute on me as it does in the pattern photo, but you never know. It's blocking out two measurements for the size that I chose, which is the size with the suggested ease for my bust size. So we shall see. All right, it's been a couple of days and now this is dry. So I am going to go ahead and do a couple things. I'm gonna sew up this small seam here, which is where I stopped working in the round. So I'll sew that up. I'll do a three needle bind off for the shoulders. I have to graft these two neck pieces together. And actually that I think is the thing that needs to come first. I'll have to look at the pattern. Graft that together, sew it to the back neck, do the three needle bind off, and then I'm gonna pick up stitches around each sleeve and do the ribbing there. And then with however much yarn I have left, I'm gonna come down here, unravel this provisional cast on, and then do my rib down. It is really hard for me to tell at this point whether this is gonna be a good look for me, but I think the length is going to be key. So we'll see what decisions I make when I get there. The first thing was to do the three needle bind off at the shoulders. For the held stitches, I always use needles a few sizes smaller than what I use to knit the body, and then I just use the body needle as the third needle that actually does the binding off. When I had originally finished each front and back shoulder, I left a long tail so that I wouldn't have to attach new yarn in order to bind off. That's one less end to weave in later. The three needle bind off was complicated just a tiny bit by the German short rows that I did, since I never resolved all of the doubled stitches from those short rows. I handled this by just treating each doubled stitch and its partner on the other needle as regular stitches and binding them off as normal, but in the future I would work one row even so that the doubled stitches are all finished and appear as regular stitches for the bind off. Luckily, the shoulder seam ended up looking just fine. Next up was figuring out the wacky neckband seaming. The first step was grafting the neckband extensions together, which I managed to do reasonably well. After that, the neckband gets sewn to the body at the back neck. The nature of this construction is that there are vertical stitches on the body being sewn to horizontal stitches on the neckband, so there was a little bit of fudging here. I used a Coco Knits tutorial to wrap my mind around the process. To make picking up stitches for the sleeve ribbing a bit easier, I used locking stitch markers to roughly divide the circumference of the sleeve in four. Then I also divided my desired stitch count by four and just aimed to pick up that number in each section. This way you never have to count too many stitches as you go along, and if you lose count or if your pickup rate gets messed up at any point, you only have to go back to the previous stitch marker. When I want to make sure ribbing is really neat, I will twist my purl stitches by doing eastern purls on every round, as you can see here. The front side doesn't look much different, but the purl ribs pull in just a bit more so they're slightly less visible. It's a small detail, but I like doing this. 
For the bind off, I just did a regular bind off in pattern. I considered a tubular bind off, but I don't love how those can sometimes distort the stitches in a 2x2 rib. So I do think the traditional bind off is nice here and not distracting at all. Here is the only traditional seam I did on this garment, about two inches of closing up the hole at the bottom of the dolman sleeve. Time to start on this beast of a bottom rib. The pattern calls for four inches, but I'm just going to work either until a flattering length on me or maybe until I run out of yarn. Many moons later, I'm finally getting closer to finishing this. At this point, I usually weigh my yarn to see how many grams each round is taking so that I can sort of accurately gauge how many rounds I might have left. I generally want to reserve at least three times the amount for a bind off, so if a round is taking one gram of yarn, I want to start the bind off with at least three grams. I was able to squeak just one more round out of this before the bind off. I ended up getting just over three and a half inches of rib, which I think proportionally looks fine with the body of the sweater. The bind off took much less yarn than I expected it would, but that is much better than the alternative. I really didn't feel like blocking this entire thing again, so I just wet blocked the sleeve and hem ribbing to finish this off. So in the time since I started knitting this sweater, I moved house and also I got a dog. So a lot has happened and I am really happy to be sitting here in my finished sweater finally. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this weird mid arm length sleeve. I have really short arms. So a lot of times when a sleeve cuts right at this area, it's not the best look on me. But I think because of this sort of grown on sleeve, like this dolman sleeve shape, that this length of sleeve is a little bit uh, better looking in combination with that shape. I think my favorite thing about this sweater is the way the neck is finished because you do it as you go. So you don't have to go back and screw around after the fact, like after you've sewn the sweater together, there's no going back and picking up stitches at the neckline or anything like that. I would also really recommend knitting this in the round like I did. There were a ton of stitches on the needle to begin with when I was knitting the body, but I'm glad I got that out of the way first. And then I know that the seaming of this, if I had to try to make the side seams of this neat, that would have really stressed me out probably throughout the entire knitting of the sweater. Whether that's ridiculous or not, I know myself and I know that that's how I would have felt. So if you don't mind seaming, go for it as written. If you don't want to screw around with making your side seams look neat, definitely do it in the round. One sweater down and two to go. I would also really recommend knitting this in the round like I did. Oh my God, can you stop animals? Animals, stop. Animals, stop. Stop.